very large dead zone in the water of the Gulf of Mexico. This is an area of low to no oxygen that will kill the fish. This is what NOAA has confirmed in uh, today's article. High spring rainfall and the water discharging into the Gulf are the major contributors to the size of this, which is a size estimated to be uh, as big as Massachusetts. No scientists are forecasting this summer's Gulf of Mexico hypotoxic zone, which is the dead zone, an area of low to no oxygen. And of course, this means that it can kill the fish and other marine life there. It'll be about 7,829 square miles, which is roughly the size of Massachusetts. The annual prediction based on U.S. Geological Survey river flow and the nutrient data. Now, as you can see from the map, the red are the cities. This goes all the way up to uh, the border of Canada, as you can see. And uh, the green are the farms. If you've ever flown over the United States from east to west, I've done it a couple of times, and from north to south, from Canada to, uh, well, basically to uh, over Pennsylvania to, towards New York. It's unbelievable the amount of beautiful farmland that's there. And you can see this in the map, green is the farms. Now, the 2019 forecast is close to the record size of 8,776 square miles. It's huge. I mean, to me, it looks a lot more than the state of, uh, from the map, the state of uh, Massachusetts. And it's set in uh, 2017 and larger than five-year average measured size of 5,770 square miles. The annually recurring Gulf of Mexico hypotoxic zone is primarily caused, as they say, by the excess nutrient pollution from human activities. And these are urbanization and agriculture occurring throughout the Mississippi River watershed. Once the excess nutrients reach the Gulf, they stimulate an overgrowth of algae which eventually die and then sink and decompose in the water. The resulting low oxygen levels near the bottom are insufficient to support most marine life and have long-term impacts on living marine resources that are unable to leave the area. Considering one of the world's largest, the Gulf of Mexico dead zone occurs every single summer. A major factor contributing to the large dead zone this year is the abnormally high amount of spring rainfall in many parts of the Mississippi River watershed, and that led to record high river flows and much larger nutrient loading to the Gulf of Mexico. This past May discharge in the Mississippi and Achafalaya rivers was about 67% above the long-term average between 1980 and 2018, 67% above. USGS estimates that this larger-than-average river discharge carried 156,000 metric tons of nitrate and 25,300 metric tons of phosphorus into the Gulf of Mexico in May alone. These nitrate loads were about 18% above the long-term average, and phosphorus loads were about 49% above long-term average. And the NOAA uh, issues the dead zone forecast each year, referring uh, refers uh, refines the models using uh, used by the hypoxia task force to set nutrient reduction tasks, targets, and better understand the link between hypoxia and the nutrients. The forecast assumes typical coastal weather conditions, but the measured dead zone size could be disrupted, and its size could change by major wind events, hurricanes tropical storms which mix ocean waters, as what occurred last year in 2018. A NOAA-supported monitoring survey will confirm the size of the 2019 Gulf dead zone in early August, which is a key test of the accuracy of the models. 
Quote, the models help predict how hypoxia in the Gulf of Mexico is linked to nutrients inputs coming from throughout the Mississippi River Basin. End quote. This is what Steve Thur, PhD director of NOAA's National Centers for Coastal Ocean Science says. He explains this year's historic and sustained river flows will test the accuracy of these models in extreme conditions, which are likely to occur more frequently in the future according to the latest National Climate Assessment. The assessment predicts an increase in the frequency of very heavy precipitation events in the Midwest, Great Plains, and Southeast regions, which would impact nutrients input in the northern Gulf of Mexico and the size of the hypoxic zone. The Mississippi River and Gulf of Mexico Watershed Nutrient Task Force, a group working to reduce the Gulf dead zone through nutrient reductions within the Mississippi River watershed, has set a five-year average measure size target of 1,900 square miles. While nutrient inputs in the Gulf of Mexico vary from year to year because of natural swings in precipitation discharge, the USGS also tracks longer-term gradual changes in nitrate and phosphorus loading into the Gulf of Mexico from the Mississippi River. Don Klein, Associate Director of USGS Water Resource Missionary, said, Long-term monitoring of the country's streams and rivers by USGS has shown that while nitrogen loading into some other coastal estuaries has been decreasing, that is not the case in the Gulf of Mexico. USGS monitoring and real-time sensors, coupled with watershed modeling, will continue to improve our understanding of the causes of these changes and the role they play in the Gulf and other coastal areas. USGS operates more than 3,000 real-time stream gauges, 50 real-time nitrate centers, and 35 long-term monitoring sites throughout the Mississippi Atchafalaya watershed which drains all rivers and streams in parts of all, 30, all of 31 states and two Canadian provinces into the Gulf of Mexico. This is the second year NOAA is producing its own independent forecast product, the culmination of a multi-year academic federal partnership to develop a suit of NOAA-supported hypoxia forecast models. The partnership includes teams of researchers at University of Michigan, Louisiana State University, William and Mary's Virginia Institute of Marine Science, North Carolina State University, Dalhousie University, and USGS. The NOAA forecast integrates the results of these multiple independent models into a separate average forecast and is released in coordination with these external groups, some of which are also developing independent forecasts. NOAA and his partners continue to develop additional hypoxia forecast capability to understand impacts on living marine sources better and evaluate the role of phosphorus on the dead zone sites and understand the relationship between hypoxia volume and the area. Now looking at this uh, hypoxic toxic area, if you turn that laterally instead of being horizontal the way it's lying now, it reaches basically from the Great Lakes up to the Gulf of Mexico. So it's a lot more uh, bigger in size than the state of Massachusetts. Amazing. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because 
we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.